Welcome to Chapter 10. Chapter 9 narrated my medical incidents from 2011 to 2016. There was also a commentary about Britain's political system and how it sees women and migrants. I have touched on people who could be hated in Britain for their political opinion or if they are women who do not enjoy women who I feel will die a slow mudslinging death. At the end of chapter 9 I am in 2016, and have become a chronic invalid. Chapter 10 is a non-medical chapter beginning at the beginning of 2016. I have not yet delved into my permanent illness that had not become apparent. Legal events of 2016 and 2017 are narrated here. A story about a lawyer called Z1 is narrated here. Care has been taken so that characters in my stories who did strange things can never be identified. This means chapter 10 is not a complaint, but a story designed to hopefully entertain you. I produced a medico-legal psychiatric report in 2015, in connection with an immigration application, under the supervision of my lawyer. This report said there was a risk of suicide if I was deported to India. Submitting a sympathetic psychiatric report helps fight deportation. But success is not guaranteed. The judge who makes the decision takes various factors into account. This immigration application was unsuccessful. In their refusal, UKBA retorted that there were 36 lunatic asylums in Punjab, and I could stay in any of these to protect against suicide risk. The contents of this refusal indicate to me that UKBA feels it is okay for me to go to hell, but they are not a personal body, and simply make their judgments based on the type of material given to them. Mr. Z1 became my legal representative to appeal this refusal. He was not from the same solicitor's firm that organized the medico-legal report submission. This part of the immigration case involved meeting face-to-face -face with an immigration judge in April 2017. Z1 argued that he and his learned barrister would research living conditions in Punjab lunatic asylums. If the two of them determined that living conditions in Punjab lunatic asylums were uncomfortable for me, they would advise the immigration judge it was not proper to deport me. By making this statement, Z1 was implying it is ethical and proper for me to live in a lunatic asylum for the rest of my life. Such a judgment is not normally rendered to people with mental illness. Such a judgment is not rendered to anyone but insane serial killers. I wrote a registered post to Mr. Z1. Not to represent me. Mr. Z took revenge by writing to the judge about me. That it would be fine to conduct proceedings without me. Since I am mentally incompetent and cannot understand instructions. He submitted along with his letter a psychiatric medico-legal report about me, that had been created by another solicitor in 2011, five years earlier. The medico-legal report was created by a psychiatrist of Harley Street. While Mr. Z1 wrote these negative things about me to the judge, he did not mention I had asked him not to represent me. This made it look to the judge as though he was representing me at the upcoming hearing. He also lied in his letter that he had given me an appointment to prepare for the upcoming hearing, but I did not keep the appointment since I was unable to understand instructions as mentally incompetent. This comment also, albeit untrue, added support to create a misimpression to the judge he was representing me. Now the decision to be challenged at the upcoming hearing was that of UKBA wishing to send me to any of 36 lunatic asylums in Punjab after deportation to avert a suicide risk. I guess putting someone away in a lunatic 
Asylum is only fair if that person's life is worth throwing in the waste bin, without giving reasons. Such a trashable person could be many different things. For example, if a person is a genuine lunatic, his life has been pre-trashed by God. I guess when Mr. Z1 wrote to the judge as my lawyer when he wasn't my lawyer, saying I am crazy, it did not refute, it strengthened UKBA's case against me. I want to know if this type of attitude towards me by UKBA is not just rougher than how delicate a woman is and shows her body bits can be protected with machine guns from rape. It is also rougher than the attitude the UKBA would use for murderers and serial killers. Or, is it just on the same maxed out level? I think the UKBA would use a certain attitude in dealing with murderers, serial killers, and Adolf Hitler. All would get the same flat level. I think I am on the same level. Hey, there used to be people in the public who would care for someone like me. Now planet Earth is a silent tomb where no one will respond to me but wonderful woman warriors. I think through UKBA their attitudes from evidence submitted by lower departments and all sorts of individuals. The hatred towards me is not personal. Before I wrote Mr. Z1 asking him not to represent me, he was using a contemptuous tone to address me. He adamantly refused to inform the judge of the fact I had a physics degree from UMIST, a British university. He argued that my application was a partner, one, and a physics degree was irrelevant. Of course, he did not want to present facts before the judge that would show belonging and ties to the UK, which would strengthen, certainly not weaken my case against deportation to India. When I had the trumped up conviction, I had a lawyer a tall young Indian man who was trying to get me into prison. This man asked me if I hacked the atomic weapons establishment. I don't think women have existed in human history, who hacked the atomic weapons establishment, NASA, and CIA. I gathered the young man hated me so much for being a scientist but not being in a women's group, that he imagined I would have superhuman abilities. I have not studied hacking. One can ask why lawyers hated me. Black and Muslim lawyers did not hate me. Indian lawyers hated me more than white ones, but it is not possible to know if a lawyer hates you. My judgment that a lawyer hated me is based on what they did with my case. The Indian lawyers hate me on behalf of their wives who are villagers from India or not as westernized as me. Most British people would hate me as modern westernization requires that I become a Siamese twin with woman aggregate bodies. I have a virtual death sentence on my head for not fulfilling this requirement. Why should anyone be westernized? I did not say they should be. But whether you like it or the the white Anglo-Saxon is the big brother here. These Asian lawyers have an edge over me but they want to make sure they have an edge over me.